Professor Provo. We are moving on. And to do as the honest, with a special message from a faraway country, he is a professor and a Fulbright scholar from the California State University, U.S. He is the founder of the Center for Teaching and Learning, and his rich expertise is in instructional communication. With a round of applause, join me in welcoming Professor. Well, so good to see you. This is my first time in Ghana. It's been a wonderful experience. I'm so glad I came. Uh, I've learned a lot so much so, so far. I have a couple more weeks. And I'm expecting to learn a great deal from you uh, in the coming weeks. Thank you very much for your hospitality. Thank you, our leaders, for your uh, leadership in this uh, in this organization. Thank you for your welcome to me. You're very kind and supportive, and I appreciate that. And thank you for uh, listening to uh, a stranger from wherever uh, for a few minutes. And I hope that uh, that it'll be a, a few minutes that are constructive. I will be brief. Uh, I promise that. I came to offer you one word of, it, of encouragement about the the uh, work that you're facing. One practical concept or idea you may apply and uh, one word of uh, advice. So I'm using my, my gray hair and gray beard to keep that moment to provide some advice. Well, it's been very clear, uh, clearly made so far. The advent of electronic communication, of technology, of uh, digital uh, media has really changed uh, the world in which we live. And in fact, uh, the technology has reshaped both time and space for us. And since this is a college of distance education, I think the issue here has been how do we deal with space? So that's part of what you're trying to control, is, is the, the location, dealing with the distance that you face and getting experts to the students and students to the experts. So uh, we're going to focus on, on uh, that particular clearly. And that kind of, and, and the convergence of this uh, this quality of changing time and space actually is a kind of crisis, and that's in effect a good a good thing for us. A crisis about how do you deliver distance education in this place and time, so that there is that you are here in part in this this convocation has been built in a, in a sense to deal with that crisis. But again, I'm not using that word as a fearful thing. This crisis where things are now sort of exploding and changing is an opportunity. And here's where the, the encouragement comes, that it is, it is this point now where you have opportunity to rethink, to redesign, to reconsider what education might mean, uh, certainly uh, uh, for the individual student, for curricula, for how it's built uh, within the, in the nation as a whole. So that's a wonderful thing, a wonderful moment in time for you to be able to uh, to take on this massive project. And it is uh, a big one that's going to be uh, facing. But it, this change invites opportunity to grow and to develop, and so that so that in five years from now, this will be a very different kind of learning. Uh, uh, institution. The distance education will be different, significantly different than it is now, in large part by what you're able to do with your uh, expertise, your skill, and your creativity. Now, the word of uh, the practical term that I want to bring you, and I, I hope that this is helpful throughout all of your discussions in the future. Now, as we as we've talked a, a great deal about technology, technology is something, it's a tool, it's something that human beings has, have made. 
we built these things, whatever they are. And it is a tool. It's simply that. It is not, it is not a panacea. It's a tool that we can appropriate. All technologies have something, some qualities that we call affordances. Affordances are particular qualities that uh, any object may have that make it particularly useful and functional in some specific way. So for example, a very rude or small example would be a hammer. This is something, it's a tool that we've made. And the real affordance of a hammer is its ability to deli deliver very efficiently high force to a very specific place, right? When you hit something with a hammer, you can you can do great things and you, you minimize damage surrounding it because it's a hammer as opposed to using a brick or some other tool. So a hammer can be used that way. That's the, the affordances of the hammer are this ability to focus power. Now a hammer can also be used as, say, a plumb bob tie it on a string and hang it and use it as a plumb bob. But there are other things that work better for that function, actually. There are other things that could do it. You could hang a screwdriver on, on the string. Or you could use a, a plumb bob weight and you can get more precise readings if you're trying to do something like surveying or whatever. So the affordances of the hammer are in its ability to do very specific kinds of things. It can be used otherwise. Yeah but those affordances become diminished. So it's the same is true with any technology. And we have to think very hard about any technology that we're appropriating. We have to begin thinking about what can this do? What does it do well? What are the tools that we can take from this particular technology and apply to the problem of learning and teaching? So that we are not uh, simply taking whatever we have and, and trying to use it without having made those very, very precise and considered uh, decisions. So your task is to think hard about any particular technology that you're dealing with, whether it's software, hardware, or, uh, or any combination of the two, is what are the affordances of these items and their combination so that you then can begin to sort and to use and to make good, thoughtful decisions about how you're building your educational program. And that in doing that, in using your creativity and your analytical mind to do that with any particular technology will allow you to make the kind of movement forward in developing this new entity, the distance education as a new a way of delivering education. One is very functional and will be the kind of thing that others will continue to come to, to, to understand so that they come from other places to know what, uh, how to do this and how to think about these uh, technologies in ways that are most constructive. So it takes a critical mind, it takes uh, take, uh, a pause, a step back, uh, sometimes a kind of skepticism to think about what works best and then grab that my last uh, thing then is a, a, a word of um, advice. And that is as we think about teaching and learning, that, and as we think about technology, and, and technology is the word that keeps coming up, and it's, it sort of gets in, into our, it's in our vision, it's in our ears, and we think about that a lot. That we keep our focus on the people involved. That is, that we think about how people actually learn. How do they engage? As we were just hearing from the, uh, the problem. How uh, we think and we interact. We need to do things. It's not a passive uh, delivery of information. So how do people actually learn? What do we focus on on the human being? And then what can we take from the technology to help that human being do even better as a thinker, as a learner, as a professional, as a practitioner of, of whatever uh, uh, area they may be in. So then we use the affordances as a tool to help people. So that we make people the subject of the sentence, the technology is the object of the verb, which is your analysis uh, of, of that. So those are my, my ideas for you. It's encouraging you have this great opportunity. You have an idea that you can apply in terms of thinking about the affordances of any technology. 
And then my advice is to keep people as the center of the whole discussion. And then technology is the means by which we help people learn and teach as effectively as we can. Those are my words for you. And I thank you so much for the opportunity. You've been very, very good. I want to say thank you and let's clap for him again. Well, indeed, it is a special message. We have an opportunity. Opportunity to adapt a system that we can think through to make the human being better. To make our clients better. So that we stay in business and we still be on top of the business we find ourselves in. People, our clients, um, must be our focus. And for us, our clients, the students, are the most cherished students who, for us, we live, we exist as an institution.